Hi, I was asked why so much passion about embryology. Do we have to go back to embryology? I'm going to give you some example and you're going to see some things are not intuitive. You have to go back to these foundation of our development and see some steps that we intuitively may not have thought about that's going to make us understand. And we're going to take an example right now with the pathways of light in the body. In this class, paradigm shift in embryology, we are going to work maybe after the third lab into the entrance of the spermatozoa inside the ovum. And we're going to find this imprint inside the body. Where is that entrance? We've kept something in our body at that very specific place. A sperm would have to go through a lot of barrier. This is called the zona pellucida. You have a plasma membrane. And if we look at this image, you can see the sperm in green here is first entering the granulosa cells, the corona radiata here. The zona pellucida is in dark orange. Then you have the plasma membrane. And then in green, waiting for the sperm to fuse with the plasma membrane, you're going to have some zinc vesicles. And when the sperm enter in specific receptor through the zona pellucida, through the plasma membrane, it's going to eventually release those zinc sparks, 20 to 40 billions of zinc that are going to create sparks of life, waves of life through the eggs. It's absolutely amazing. And we have some ideas from animal study that, for example, in mice and monkeys, zinc sparks happens and they release 20 to 40 billion of zinc atoms. And this uh, zinc vesicle, 250 miles per hour wave, creating mini explosion and flash of light in the body, remembering we are beings of light and how it's important for our development. And that's going to start the division of the eggs and also is going to prevent polyspermy, the entrance of other sperm. Okay. So what's interesting for us is to see that when we find the entrance of the sperm, we're going to feel waves going through the body, through the mesoderm, if you want, here through the eggs. And what is so important? Because these pathways of life are going to influence a lot of metabolic process. And number one is going to influence the endothelium of blood vessels and endocardium inside the heart, which is an equivalent of an endothelium. And you have many pathology like endocarditis or endothelitis that happen in COVID cases, long-term COVID sometimes. He has been shown by some team in Harvard and other teams. So you can help with that and calcification, as you know, of the inner part of your artery, the lumen, the atherosclerosis. And what's amazing is inside the arteries, you have receptors. Melanopsin is one of them, which is an opsin, like you have in your eyes, opsin 4. So you find melanopsin in the eyes and in the vessels. It's a light-sensitive protein present in the retina and in the arteries, as well as subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. All right, so it's a non-image forming obscene and is going to send a message to, if you know, the supra-charismatic nucleus of the hypothalamus to influence circadian rhythms. But even more important, we have these melanocortins, hormones and receptors, five receptors, uh, here we are thinking about MC1 and MC3 for the endothelium of the vessels, of the blood vessels and endocardium. But for example, MC1 is more working with melanin. Some receptors are working inside the brain for food intake, glucose balance. MC1 and MC3 are going to work with the endothelium, which is a very important part of the vessels because it's an immune organ as well as a endocrine organ. It's going to work on nitric oxide. It's going to have an anti-inflammatory effect, prevent coagulation of platelets, coagulation of white corpuscle, prevent plaque, and these receptors respond to light, for example, UV light. And you can see here the flat layer inside an artery, the endothelium. And if you add all this surface together, it's one of the largest organ in the body. And this is the center of your arteries. And these are some of the function of this amazing endothelium. It is going to regulate immune functions. Those are antigen-presenting cells like macrophage, the Langerhans cells, lymphocyte T. They're going to regulate platelet function and especially coagulation. So you prevent clots. They're going to modulate blood flow and vascular resistance by releasing nitric oxide or not. 
So you have many functions like that that are very important. So you want to check the endothelium and endocardium throughout your body. And the entrance of the sperm is going to help. It's going to be very interesting to work with this. And this is just one example of the knowledge we could gain by going back in embryology and rechecking the steps we often forgot, like the presence of a notochord that almost completely disappeared in an adult body, but had such an important function at some stage. So this is one of my answers to why going back to embryology, what are we learning that we don't really know, and how can it serve us for our clients and patients today? So hopefully we'll see you at this class, Paradigm Shift in Embryology, and you could help even more clients and more difficult cases.